listening to the Humans vs. Retirement podcast with financial planner and retirement specialist, Dan Haylett. In this podcast, Dan explores ways to help you overcome the behavioural, emotional and financial challenges of life after work. Join Dan for the journey where he will explore how our wonderful human brain will naturally fight against what it takes to live a happy, healthy and wealthy retirement. Dan will draw on years of expertise, experience and expert guests to solve the behavioural, emotional and financial challenges of life after work. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to the Humans vs. Retirement podcast. I'm your host, Dan Haylett. And today's episode is going to be an absolute cracker, as I'm delighted to have a conversation with journalist and author of the groundbreaking book, Not Fade Away, how to Thrive in Retirement, Celia Dodd. Celia, welcome to the Humans versus Retirement podcast. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Dan. It's great to be with you. Perfect. Um, I can't wait to have the conversation because straight off the bat, what I am going to say is that your book is uh, one of the, if not the best book uh, that I've read on the emotional challenges of retirement and some real practical examples of real people that have gone through um, retirement and the research that you've done and the people that you've spoke to are phenomenal. So it's one that everybody, all the listeners should go out and buy and links will obviously be uh, in, in, in the show notes. Um, so, but before we get into all of your wisdom and knowledge that you have acquired through your years in uh, journalism and the research that you've done writing your books that, you, that, that you've written. Um, I'd love for you to share with the listeners your journey and how you find yourself where you are today. I'm not retired myself. I'm, I suppose I'm not even, I'm just kind of thinking about retirement now. Um, as a writer, you're very lucky. You don't really ever have to retire. Um, but at the same time, you're not so lucky because, you know, in, in many ways, retirement would be fabulous. Um, my husband is retired. Um, I, I wrote the book really because my father had a terrible retirement. He got very depressed um, when he retired and actually, you know, he didn't live very long. So I really wondered why retirement um, could be so difficult for people. And I wanted to try in some way to find out ways to make it you know, the fulfilling and wonderful time it can be for more people, you know, because I know many people struggle like my dad did. Um, but um, in talking to people, uh, you know, I discovered more and more about how wonderful it can be, as well as about the struggles. Um, so after being a, you know, as I wrote it really because I was, you know, approaching retirement age myself and there were a lot of conversations about it you know you you find your friends are all talking about it swapping notes about what's the best thing to do and and as I said a certain amount of dread about the dreaded r word so um yeah I came up with the idea and it you know it was just a wonderful it was it was a really great project to work on it was wonderful to interview so many different people and to realize that it's ultimately you know a good retirement is down to you <laughs> it's an individual thing you've got to make it work and I think that you know your your years in um, writing about family and relationships, health and education. You've been featured in um, kind of the Times, the Independent, um, uh, Daily Mail. You know that's obviously taken to a point where you, you know, you're very curious about all of this stuff that leads into life transitions. I suppose, and you've wrote other books uh, around this, haven't you? Yeah, well, I'm I'm really interested in life transitions, and the first book I re- wrote was about the empty nest when your kids leave home, which is one of the biggest life transitions that parents face, mm. and indeed whole whole families. Um, and then my most recent book is um, about adult children. You know, um, your relationship with adult children, because after all that goes on, you know, your whole life, you 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 bring them up, and you think, oh well, that's it they've gone they've flown the nest but actually of course we have relationships with our with our children you know for as long as we're both alive and and that can be quite complicated you know as they get you know they become their own you know they've got their own views and you know there are all kinds of um, problems and uh, as well as it being you know a great growing relationship so 
yeah, that that was that was my last book, and that was very enjoyable. But I think my the closest to my heart is actually not a fade away. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think that's. Um, we're going to dig into this as we have this conversation, but the whole life transition piece is really interesting because the transition of retirement is from an emotional behavioral point of view very similar to the transition of um, moving out or uh, divorce or having your first child and um, and I think those life transitions and you writing about this for a number of years has really led to what I believe is is just the most amazing book. And 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 before we dig, I do want you mentioned about you got to kind of retirement age in in kind of brackets mm-hmm. for people that may be watching some of this. Um, <laughs> but I, I want to kind of just read the back of the book because I think the back of the book sets this. And and for those that are watching, the back cover of the book sets this conversation up amazingly well and the headline is retirement is about change not age which I think Mm -hmm. is just an amazing uh, concept for us to start to mentally get around Mm -hmm. it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to be yourself and do what you want to do it offers new possibilities for personal growth through learning retraining traveling and friendship but it's also one of the biggest transitions we face and brings huge psychological and emotional challenges. It's not surprising that many people struggle with the adjustment to a different pace of life. The book, Not Fade Away, it guides you through these challenges, dealing with lots lots of status, routine, reinventing relationships, managing money, and above all, finding new meaning and purpose. And I think that there is part of some of the challenges uh, that that we face. Mm-hmm. So, kind of, uh, I suppose, kicking off, and and I'm really curious to understand through all the work that you've done, what you believe are some of the biggest challenges when it does come to this wonderful man-made thing <laughs> that we've ended up uh, coming to label retirement. Yeah. Well, I think the the biggest challenge which you just mentioned is actually finding new purpose. Um, which is not to do with earning money. <laughs> you know, once when you're at work, um, you're pretty much you're kind of on autopilot, really. You know, your purpose is taken care of, um, and what you do there's a, it, there's a lot of value in what you do because you're earning money. You know, that it's a sort of given. Whereas when you stop being paid for what you do, you've got to find a whole new way of valuing it. And I think that can be really, I find that very difficult myself. Um, And I think a lot of people in my book found it very difficult. And so, you know, that's one of the things. But I think it's a wonderful opportunity to find new activities, new things to do that really um, echo with your core values. You know, it is a chance to really find meaning that's right for you, find me, you know, find something that's right for you it doesn't matter what anybody else is is doing you know the, the traditional ideas about playing golf or you know moving to south of spain or, or whatever you know that they may very likely won't be right for you it's a question of really working out what's right for you and that takes a lot of um, soul searching a lot of exploration but that's a lot of fun you know and it also can take a lot of mistakes a lot of people in my book made mistakes, but they regarded them, in retrospect, certainly as experiments. You know, they they found their path, you know, by making mistakes, by, you know, one guy went to Nepal to teach English. He'd never, I don't think he'd ever been much further than, you know, he'd, he'd never been far abroad before. So it was a, really out of his comfort zone. And it all went pear-shaped. He broke his leg. He didn't enjoy it. He came back to England and then um, not long after he went back and tried again and found it a different role. Um, And he's carried on trying experiments in different ways. Um, And, uh, you know, now he's, you know, all of those things along the way, he wasn't unhappy. It was just a way of finding what he really wanted to do. So, uh, you know, I think that that's key, really. Um, That's key. Um, And I think another challenge is that... um, we're all in denial about retirement. Nobody wants to say they're retired. And a lot of people really dread it. Um, and even people who are looking forward to it don't necessarily plan um, for it in a realistic way. Um, 
I was doing a course that I helped to uh, develop the other day, and one of the participants said, you know, I retirement is just nothing like what I'd expected. Um, and I think with a bit of forward thinking, y- you can m- make it better. If you, I think it, it, you know, I think it, it can be really successful. But the problem is that when we're at work, there's not enough time necessarily to, to sit down and plan. But I think you can get your thoughts in motion. You can kind of start thinking along the way. You can start putting things in motion. So, yeah, I think I think uh, I think that's the fact we're in denial is a bit of a thing. Um, and um, then the fact that we think of retirement as a very passive phase of our lives, you know, carpet and slippers and all of that, doing a bit of gardening maybe. But actually, it, it's you have to be very proactive to make it work. You have to take the bull by the horns and um, be self-motivated and think about how you want the future to look. Um, and you know the future could well your retirement could well last 30 years and so you've got to be very adaptable to change at the same time got to be ready to you know circumstances change you change and I think it's very useful to look back over the last 30 years of your life and think how much you've changed in those 30 years and think well the next 30 years you could change just as much you can do as many different things you, you, it's good to see it as a whole new kind of career path, if you like, you know, where, where you could retrain, you could do all kinds of stuff. Um, not this idea that it's passive or that somehow it's an ending. It's the, it's a beginning. I think that's such an important part, Celia, because, because I think I'm trying to think of an example where a plan has gone to plan and it hasn't. <laughs> you know, and I think, you know, we, 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 we work pretty deeply with with our clients on the non-financial side of of retirement as well as dealing with some of the important money bits obviously as a as a financial planner but very deeply on the non-financial stuff and um i think every retirement plan is wrong the moment it's created and you find happiness and joy in pursuits that you may have not even thought of pre-retirement and you mentioned a couple of words there that i think are so crucial for people to get in a mindset before they push the button and before they enter um, a phase of life after paid work. And that's kind of adaptability, that's flexibility, and that's knowing that tomorrow tomorrow is not guaranteed, number one, but tomorrow is also going to be different to what you thought it would be. Um, and at a time in our lives where actually we have the time and the probably the ability to um, align that with what we want to have in terms of the value that we've got, I think it's really crucial. And you, and you mentioned um, some things in your book around that as well, some research that you gathered from some uh, professors around kind of adaptability is shown to be a key trait that makes for a good retirement and and half the battle is to be alert to your changing needs and ready to respond and adapt right and I think a lot of people have the mindset that oh I've done that for my career I'm going to go into this phase of life now where I can just kind of relax but that often doesn't bring the purpose and meaning does it and you've, you've come across that a lot yeah no absolutely and I think um you know a lot of people have a kind of honeymoon period, particularly mm-hmm. when they first retire. And that's great. You know, you want to relax. You want to, you know, have a lovely holiday, you know, just just chill and do the things, you know, l- l- go with the flow, as it were. But I think if you then are alert to how you're feeling, you, you probably realise that after about six months or a year or so, when it is, that that's not quite enough. And, and that's, so that's really what I'm talking about in responding to your own needs as well as external circumstances. That um, you know, one guy in my book, he was a he used to be a head teacher of a primary school, and he said, you know, he, he would go. I spoke to him when he was going through a phase where he was feeling really dissatisfied. He'd had a great, you know, first seven years. He'd done loads of biking and you know, volunteering at the local um, bike works and you know, loads of different stuff been to Australia but he was suddenly finding it wasn't enough and so he said he went through a kind of period about three months of really looking objectively at what he should do next you know sort of almost stepping back 
which I think can be really helpful. So in in, in the search for kind of um, purpose and meaning, I think you, you mention it in your book a lot around, you know, purpose and meaning is often handed to us on a bit of a plate in working life. Mm. It, it, we, we feel like we have got purpose and meaning, but we probably haven't done the the deep soul searching work that truly gives us uh, purpose and meaning. So um, I think that the ability for us post work or, or, or coming up to that point where we do leave full time work, um, I think we have to understand that, and, and you quote this in your book many times that, you know, people that have been very successful in the transition, they have done quite deep soul searching work to find their purpose and meaning in quite a structured um, way. And actually, it's probably more complicated in uh, retirement than it has ever been, right? Yeah, no, definitely. I think retirement's, you know, becoming more and more complicated. And yet, yeah. ironically, there's less and less support and help in preparing for it. You know, mm. there aren't the courses that there used to be. But yeah, I think um, I think the most, you know, the happiest people had um, done some quite a lot of soul searching. Um, and I think one of the things that's helpful is to think about, you know, the things that you you really enjoyed at work you know that the moments that really gave you pleasure and because this is an opportunity you can ditch the stuff that that you don't enjoy you can you don't have to do that anymore but you you know that you can you can focus on on the things not necessarily doing them exactly the same but finding them in in other areas so perhaps it's you know having a, a group of supportive work colleagues you could you could find that in other contexts I think it's also really helpful to look back on the things you've had to give up that you enjoyed because when we're busy at work or bring up a family, there isn't time. I mean, for me, I've started learning the flute again after 40 years, and that's a steep learning curve. <laughs> um, but it's brought, I think, as you said before, one thing leads to another. You know, you think, oh, I'm just going to, you know, learn the flute. But in fact, it brings so many benefits, social, it brings a big goal, massive goal in my life with individual goals within it, which I think is really helpful actually in finding purpose. You want one big overarching purpose and then within that, to achieve that purpose, you want lots of you know, smaller goals. So practicing every week for the lesson, you know, working up to a concert, da 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 da. Um, before I finally play at the festival hall, ha ha. But um, it will happen. I've got no doubt. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think there's all kinds of ways that you can work out what what will really give you fulfilment and and meaning in your life. Um, and it, as I say, as I said before, it, it's different for everyone. So although it's helpful to talk to other people, and one of the reasons that I talk to so many different people in my book is to, it's a sort of way of sounding out what works for other people. Ultimately, it, it, the, the decisions have got to be yours, I think. Do, do you think that we've got this mindset now that we have to leave something and be completely different the other side? Um, and I suppose the point here is that for, for the vast majority of people that, you know, are fortunate enough to reach their 60s, um, for instance, let's say that's a typical late 50s, early 60s, mid 60s, they, they've built up, no matter what job they've been in, they've built up a skill set, they've built up resilience, they've been through other transitions. And I don't think enough people give themselves enough credit for that. And actually then, like you said, taking this overarching goal and breaking it down and creating a plan and steps and practice routines and, you know, uh, a schedule and a diary and all that stuff. Actually, many people have done this through their working career. They're probably very good at this stuff. And they end up going, well, I don't want to do that anymore because that's associated with work. But actually, if you take of all, all the wonderful skills that you've accumulated and situations you've been through and resilience that you have uh, got, I think that stands us in wonderful stead for these things in retirement, but we don't often look back and visit yeah. those. Yeah. No, I think, um, I, again, a lot of research has shown that we are really well equipped, you know, because we've, you know, we've had a few curve balls thrown at us by this stage in life. We've had a few, you know, we've had to deal with a lot of, you know, difficulties, problems, 
So we are resilient and we are adaptable. So this idea that older people are the are kind of stuck in their ways is a load of rubbish, actually. It really is. Um, but I think as you get older, I know this myself, you can fall into those self-limiting beliefs. And it's a bit of a battle to overcome them. You think, oh, I'm, you know, I'm in my 60s, I must be like this. So, you know, I'm it, this is it's too late, was a really common one, which is terrible. It's never too late. Um so yeah, I, I think we have got um a, a lot a lot of the skills we need to deal with this phase. And I think as you were talking about sort of the, the skills that you've built up actually work-wise, I think it's really helpful to look at those and think about different ways that you can use them. You may want to not use them at all. You may want to just do something completely different. That's absolutely fine. But it's worth kind of thinking about it quite carefully, I think, um, and, and really researching different contexts that you could use them in because there's so much out there now. There's so many different opportunities um, whether it's volunteering, you know, this vast range of stuff that you can do, um, as well as, um, you know, carrying on part-time work, which, of course, is very common now, unretiring, as it's called. Um, so, you know, there, there are lots of different possibilities, and it's really a question of almost taking, regarding it as a full-time job and, and doing your research, you know, thinking, working out, uh, working through all the options. I think when it, it becomes when when your purpose or getting up, pulling back the duvet doesn't actually involve having to earn money, um, you know, and then you you kind of live life on your terms, you can find something with meaning. And if it does provide income, mm -hmm. then that's the thing, because there is a, a value, as, as you said, rightly said, you know, if you're paid for something, it feels like that that's valuable if you're not paid for something, it becomes quite challenging to feel like if you're adding value. And I know you've quoted many things in the book about uh, people do have this, um, I suppose, this volunteering idea in their head. And it often becomes quite challenging because they volunteer and they're getting zero reward for it because reward, reward was through pay. And actually, if you don't volunteer for an organisation that gives you non-financial rewards, then you know, it's often quite challenging to figure out if you're doing a good job or it, it kind of links in with your values. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really important when it comes to volunteering to think about what's in it for you. Um, and, you know, that, it, and that's not selfish. Of course, you'll be giving something by volunteering, but there's no point doing it if it's, if it, it, it's not doing anything for you. And there are so many different things like you know, there are very, very many websites which, which will, you know, do, which have fantastic sort of search options for finding out what really resonates with the things you'd like to do. If you want to be outdoors, if you want to go and clean up a beach, if you want to, you know, you know, it's not just going to work in the Oxfam shop. I think people think of volunteering as that. Um, you know, it could be helping in a school with reading. You know, there, there are just millions of different things you can do now and um again they can be very sociable or not everyone is sociable some people want to do things you know in a in a quieter way you know in a more solitary way so that and there are plenty of opportunities for that as well to you know so i think uh, i met somebody who's working at the q records office the national records office and, and that's a quite a solitary job it suits him down to the ground loves it so and i think that as you begin exploring I am a great believer in start somewhere. Just start somewhere with something you're curious about. You it doesn't have to be a big passion. Just find something you're curious about, and that will lead you in a different, you know, to other things. You'll either talk to people, or you know, one you will, you know, there'll be a link to something else that's more suitable. I think you just have to start somewhere. And I think a couple of points. I think it's it's running your own race, isn't it? I think we can, you know, as human beings, we are heavily influenced by the world outside us, and that world outside us is now as noisy as it's ever been. It's as big as it's ever been, and I think it can often lead to lots of emotional challenges when it comes to thinking about what your life after work looks like. And you have a conversation with your friend down the pub or a couple of people over dinner, and it, it can often. Um, take us off track of what's truly important to us. So I think it's really important to figure out and spend time either yourself 
or if you're married or you're with a partner, particularly as a couple, figuring out what's really important and having someone, whether it's a coach or a financial planner or um, a trusted friend or colleague or other services that are out there, I think having those conversations are so vital. Because I think one that, and you, you say this in your book a lot, I think that retirement can be and often is a sudden gift of time and freedom. Um, but that time and freedom coupled with, as you've just said a couple of times, there's loads to do, can often become quite overwhelming. And I think we end up trying to branch ourselves too far. And as you said, just find something knowing that that thing probably isn't going to be the thing that you do in a year's time and narrow these options down. I think, you, you, And you've come across many examples, haven't you, of that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, th- I, think, I think that's really important. Um, and also just, I think, what the common mistake that many people make is that they, when they first retire, they cram their diary with commitments. So mm-hmm. they're, you know, they're volunteering for three different organizations. And they're, you know, and so you end up having the same problem that you had at work, which is not really having enough time to do things as well as you might like. You know, a lot of people say that. So I think it's worth sort of standing back and, um, you know, taking quite an objective look and thinking about how what you how you'd like your life to be in five years time or you know um how you might might get there and and i think because i think the trouble is we get clouded by you know the time at work don't we so so work takes up so much of our kind of energy and our time as as we're going through it um it, it's very easy and i think you say this in your book actually something like, it's very easy to kind of lose sight of what's beyond it you know that, that you've got so many possibilities that lie beyond work it's very it's it's very hard to dedicate some of the time and energy you need to think about this going forward but actually if we realize that it might not be as much time and energy if we don't kind of open up the galaxy to everything that we need we you know it, you know yeah, this and is... I think that coupled with this feeling which I'm afraid is inevitable um as you approach retirement is that it, that life is run you know the time is running out you know you've got to you know you've got to seize the hour and all of that that can le- make you panic a bit mm. actually and you feel overwhelmed and a bit panicky and you think oh I'm and you end up just sitting on the sofa watching the telly um so I think it, yeah, again, it's about starting somewhere and just finding things that, you, you know, not aiming for, for perfection. Yeah, You know, at, the, at this stage in life, another thing is you maybe have to accept you're never going to, you know, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm never going to play at the festival. I'm, ne- You know, you're never going to... Um, I don't know, win the Grand National, whatever, you know, whatever your interests were, you're not, you know, you're never going to win the Masters. I, all of those things you have to accept. Um, and and in a way that can be quite relaxing <laughs> because you do things for the pleasure of doing them. And I think when you, uh, you've talked quite a lot about the kind of mindset of being at work. And I think if you allow yourself when you're retired, you can develop a new mindset, which is not, regarding stress and being busy and having to do everything in a great rush you know when you're working you think that's great oh I'm busy but when you retire you can actually develop a new mindset about how important it is to have to do things properly and to really enjoy them and relish them and relish all the different things they bring you know the kind of social relish being with other people spending time with other people. Um, a lot of people, whether they were in my book, who are very, you know, grand at work, had very high-powered jobs, say they really enjoyed the simple things, doing the simple things in life properly, having time to have a lovely meal with your, with an old friend, having time to put the plants in the garden without it being just another job you've got to do, you know. When things... So I think there is this new thing that if you allow it time to develop in retirement, can be really nice. And it's not about slowing down necessarily. It's just doing things with more focus, if you like. I think it's such an important point you've just made. Um, Because we, again, a lot of research into the human brain and psyche suggests that we value 
uh, expertise. So we we value actually being considered or feeling like we are experts in something or mastery. We you know we we're kind of on on the road to mastery. And I think the trouble with a with a successful career more often than not is you become average or pretty decent at a lot of things yeah. and 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 we don't have the time i think to truly discover mastery in um in one or two things and i think the opportunity of of retirement the opportunity of you know post full time work is that we have the ability to feel like we're on the journey to master um you know one or two things that are really really important to us and again all the research into the human brain suggests that that gives us film fulfillment purpose uh meaning um which i think is such an important thing for everybody all the listeners and everybody thinking about retirement you know you don't have to go into this with a hundred things on your to-do list you know think of the things that are valuable think of the things you want to master whether it is gardening golf instruments art family relationships that you want to get deeper with um cooking i've got a a client who's always wanted to um you know he's been a decent cook he's always wanted to feel like he can knock up something with a pantry full of stuff without any recipes um and he's gone on three or four quite significant cookery courses um i've been around for dinner he's doing an amazing job um you know and 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 that's give him loads of fulfillment he's dedicated to researching and looking at various cooking techniques and all of this and um he had a very high powered job in banking and never dedicated any time to this so as you said you can have you know no matter how much zeros you've earned in your life no matter how many the pounds and pence are sitting in your pension fund no matter how high powered your job was um and no matter how much you were held in regard bar none everybody that comes into retirement wants this thing to be simpler and wants this thing to be a lot less um stressful and you know doesn't want the you know they don't want to replicate that and i think people feel like they have to replicate the thing that they've always been yeah Exactly. The only thing I would say is that really fascinated me um, and actually took me by surprise was um, one of the people I interviewed said he really missed not doing things he didn't look forward to. He wanted thing new things that he didn't look forward to. Interesting. Yeah. Which is really about um, in his case, you know, in his case, he found it by by volunteering at a, a a bike place, a bike shop, which was for, you know, a kind of helping people who couldn't afford bikes and so on to get them repaired. Um, because he said, you know, it's about achievement. So you, you still want that feeling of, yes, I've nailed it, you know, um, from time to time. And that inevitably involves not looking forward to something because... Mm you know you're you feel nervous about it or you're you know or that person's going to be difficult or whatever it is but then you it's about overcoming challenges basically getting you know the and i think to me that kind of hit the nail on the head that you have to still be prepared to you think oh retirement i you know i don't have to do anything i don't like but actually i think it is really good to have some things that you know, not that you hate, or, but but that create a certain, you know, make you feel a bit tense or make you, you know, a bit concerned. You're, so yeah, I, I think that's quite a good tip myself. I th- and I've got many. I think it. I think it's that taking yourself outside the comfort zone is something that you've got no ability over, right? If you've been a, if you've run a business or you've been very successful in corporate world, then you've got stacks of skills and of a, an ability in certain things. Um, I've got again that that you know my, my my client who cooked was one was one of those things. I've got uh, another uh, client who basically said to me that he wanted to find something that he's never done before and be on a journey to feel like he can be reasonably good at it. And he chose tennis. Um, and it was kind of like I've never I've uh, the last time I hit a tennis ball when I was sixteen. I'm now fifty five. Um, I've got all these wonderful skills that I've kind of accumulated in my corporate world. I'm now going to try 
and become the best tennis player I can be. And it's out of the comfort zone. It's joining a new social environment. It's taking lessons. It's hitting the ball in the net all the time. It's being frustrated because you're not very good at it. But as you said, the journey is often better than the destination, right? The journey of, you know, mastery. And I think it's such an important point. Mm. And also, I think, you know, this social element is important, trying to put yourself in situations where you're mixing with different kinds of people and particularly younger people. I think this idea that retired people are all in one kind of zone together is Mm. terrible. Mm. I think we should all be trying to mix with as many different ages as we can. It's very energizing. There's a a great study from the MIT lab in in the States about how um, we must mix with other ages um, and how it gives us... um, kind of actually helps on the cognitive decline side of things as well it's in particularly for people in their 60s um you know mixing with other people with other energies and other social environments Mm. is so important i think Mm. it's such an important point and of course it helps you to stay um open to new ideas and Mm. you know flexible it helps with that whole thing of of adaptability because you you don't get stuck with some idea if if you're talking to a younger person who's got a completely different perspective it's really useful absolutely um th- i do before we kind of start um winding down a bit i mean we we i, I could spend hours talking to you and we, we have actually probably spent hours over the last couple of conversations so um, i'm sure there's another opportunity for have a, for us to have another conversation at some point but um i think one of the real concerns of people um, entering into retirement is cognitive decline. And and I think they are seeing this, you know, I've got many, many people that are just thinking about retiring, stepping back from work or have retired. And they're, they, they've got elderly parents that have dementia. And it feels like dementia is just everywhere at the moment. Um, so, so they are concerned about what that looks like for them and, you know, the experiences that they've gone through with parents or other loved ones or friends is is, is obviously influencing this. But I, I know you quote it in your book. There are obviously many studies out there around this, but, you know, it's suggesting that a strong sense of purpose appears to lower the risk of dementia by 2.4 times, which I think is... Um, an unbelievable statistic and that people with clear goals and a mission, I love the word mission, I love it, um, lived longer than people without. So I'd love you just to touch on that because I just think that it's, you know, if, if there's any reason for us to dedicate some time to have a clear purpose is that we could actually lower our risk of dementia. I think most m- many people would probably dedicate the time they need to. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of, it's not exactly well it's a bit obvious that if you've got a purpose then it keeps your cogs you know your brain cogs going it you know it keeps your you know it keeps you you thinking and thinking of new ideas and i think that's shown to be very important it it also you know if you've got a purpose um it gives you a very good reasons to stay fit and healthy and i think you know again one of i think one of the big helps just in prevent preventing dementia is to be physically very fit you know physical fitness goes with it you know i think um so there it's all part of a, a, a kind of whole package if you like that you've got this purpose and that makes you um healthy it's good for your well-being in all kinds of different ways and your physical as, as well as your mental well-being so um yeah, I mean, my mother-in-law, she carried on working till she was 94, until, you know, about two months before she died. She was really driven. Um, and it kept, you know, she was walking up and down the stairs. So, you know, she was very fit, um, although not, you know, not perfect. Not, mm. But, uh, yeah, it, it, I think you can see in people that have a clear purpose in their life that they, you know, they want to, you want to, you've got a reason for living. You've got a reason for getting out of bed in the morning, you know, Mm. and um, the completely opposite to my poor dad who really didn't. And, and so, you know, just got chronic, you know, severely depressed. Um, So, yeah, so that's, that's what you hope is to have, is to have, that's what I hope for my retirement is to find real meaning and, and a real, a new purpose, if you like. 
And I think that that notion of the, the, you know this, we're one, maybe if you, if we're kind of ultra conservative around number, you know, we're one or two generations into this modern day retirement. The thing that's been made up. And I've said on other episodes, the thing that we've invented that actually we're struggling with um, it is quite an interesting uh, concept. And I think very quickly we've uh, we've we've adopted a pretty set way of thinking about what retirement looks like. And it's often, as you said, this this uh, you know, well, I, I don't work past retirement, right? And it's kind of like I need to find other things that don't involve work and I need to try and 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 I think you know we've been conditioned very quickly and I think we need to uncondition ourselves pretty quickly because um I think that there's lots of opportunities to actually I think it's probably the biggest opportunity we will ever have in our lives when we reach mid 50s early 60s to fully align what's important with us with our time I think it is the best opportunity and so we shouldn't want to waste that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And I think one of the things that people can do in the run-up to retirement is sort of start building a bridge between the working life and the new retired life. And by um, I mean, there's a fantastic man in my book. He was a train driver, and he really loved driving high-speed trains. And he decided to retire early at 60, um, and he knew what he was going to miss. He identified it. And he knew he was going to miss his colleagues and and his you know the general camaraderie, and he knew that he was going to need new stuff. So he set up three different kind of um, networks of social networks. Um, one was because he was a they were all railway enthusiasts. They they would meet up to go around the old vintage railways. Another one was beer, and I can't remember. What, oh, the other one was a walking group. So he. He, some were with colleagues and some were with, um, you know, just friends. So he's got all of those things that are, provide continuity, if you like. Um, and one of the psychologists I um, interviewed called Oliver Robinson, he said that's key, you know, to build these bridges. So if you have got time, I realise that people often don't have time, but if you can just start thinking in those ways, and, you know, thinking of the things that you might be doing in the future or you might look forward, you stop seeing it as a departure with no destination and give retirement a fantastic destination that you're looking forward to. I think that's really helpful. That's a wonderful place for us to start to to wrap up. I absolutely love that. I think, yeah, the departure becomes and the journey becomes exciting destination slightly unknown but that's yeah. cool yeah. um and i think that that's the really exciting part of this continuous alignment of what's important and actually a lot of people i work with don't you know it, it's not one meeting one exercise you know or here's your values mm. you know values change because yeah. i don't think and you know we don't actually truly know what's important to us until we go into a period of exploration and exactly. discovery Um, And we need to give ourselves time to do it, don't we? Mm, Exactly. Exactly. Um, Celia, this has been such an amazing conversation. Thank you so much. I'd like to ask you some questions, as I do for all of the guests. So, um, and and, uh, actually, out of everyone I've uh, uh, had the conversation with, I've got high expectations for question number one, because you've written an amazing book about it. You've thought a lot about it. Um, and you've already kind of give some of the answers away, but um, you know what? What will your in brackets retirement look like, or does it look like? Well, I mean, I think really, I think it will have hopefully a couple of regular commitments in the week to give the week a bit of structure, um, and then I hope it'll be fairly spontaneous. And I hope those two regular commitments will be something that I. Um, that have real meaning for me i'd love to find as i've said before a wonderful new purpose and then i'm exploring what that might be in the future um yeah i'm really kind of thinking hard about it but i think the best thing is that it can be like a patchwork of lots of different things but with one thing as you know this central thing that i'm either working on i mean i may well carry on working i might write another book that's a possibility 
um, but that that doesn't take over so that there are other things, um, you know, there's a whole rich tapestry. And the main thing is spending more time with friends. I think, you know, you just don't have enough time to spend with, with other people when you're, when you're working. And I think that that's a great joy, actually, that I'm beginning to appreciate more and more. Uh, yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, so I'm going to put you on my side of the table now a little <laughs> bit. So um, I, I'm sitting across from you. We're having a conversation. I'm 55. I've established that money's no problem. You know, we, I've got enough money for uh, the retirement that I want to live. What would be your number one tip for a happy, healthy and wealthy retirement? Um. Be curious, stay curious, keep learning and keep doing things that really stretch you. Um, I think those are the, the most important things. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I've said it before, there's a 30 second rewind button on most podcast uh, platforms. Um, please use that because that was a fantastic answer. Be curious, keep learning. I think stay sharp um, and, and pushing yourself is still massively important what a wonderful answer thank you um so um lastly when it comes to this human versus retirement mm. battle and face off that we do um that, that we do face is there anything that i've not asked you or covered that uh, that you think i should have well i think one thing that i think you touched on a bit is couples um and how difficult it can be for couples when um, you either both retire or, or one at a time. I think, um, you know, when you are both retired, being together 24-7 is very different to just see each other in the evenings and the weekends. And I think it puts huge pressure on relationships. Um, so I think that needs some careful thought and discussion and not making assumptions. I think at this stage in our lives, it's really easy to just assume that the your partner likes doing something or wants something in their retirement. Or, but that's probably changed, just as you've changed. And I think it's really important to just sit down and have a proper discussion about it, and also discuss things like, you know, do you want to retire at the same time? Some some people feel very strongly about that, that they want to be able to make the most of their time together. Um, and equally, some people want to carry on working um, or, you know, they, they have different things. They don't want to travel. You know, there's often an assumption, oh, we were going to have we were going to want to travel. Well, some people don't want to. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you need to kind of hammer that out and uh, and keep the dialogue going because, you know, it can be a wonderful time for couples. I think it's I, I don't mean to be too negative about it, but I I'm obviously came across quite a lot of difficulties. Like one thing is, which was surprised me, I hadn't thought of, is that you know a lot of women want feels you know would like to have some time in the house on their own you know they miss that or equally men if they've been the, the home-based person um just those things that you, you don't think you don't really think about beforehand um so yeah I think it's very interesting for couples and I think uh yeah I, I think they they need support or they they need to be thinking about things beforehand yeah, I th couldn't agree more. I think there, there is an assumption that the other person in the relationship is on the same path as you without, I think mm -hmm. that's kind mm -hmm. of a, a massive assumption that I see. Um, if anyone that we choose to work with has a partner or is married, we only work with the couple. If if we get the comment, oh, don't worry, uh, he or she is fine, they're, they're delegating all this to me, um, we won't work with them because you can't create that shared vision and individual visions about what's important and what to know. And I've had many conversations with people that have been married for multiple decades, that one or two questions in, they're looking at each other with surprise going, why have you never, why have we never had this? Why have you never told me that? Um, and they just don't, they simply don't give themselves the time and freedom to have a conversation about what this phase of life looks like and what's important to individuals because I think they're probably afraid that it is, it's going to be so different. Um, they don't ever have that conversation. But the best retirements I've seen are ones that have three strands. It's kind of your own unique vision and then the one that you shared together. And then you can have those three journeys running kind of simultaneously. So I think that's such, a, such an important point. 
Yeah, there's a couple in my book who who actually uh, go they go away for the weekend to think, you know, to plan or to think about to discuss. Yeah, all this, I, I love to make those. A special yeah, time. yeah, I thought yeah. you know, and I think you can. You know, obviously, you don't have to go away. You can you can make a special date where you you know what once every so often you go and you almost have, you know just have a list of things to talk about to mm-hmm. talk and it's you know it's fun it's not it's not <laughs> you just compare notes it's very mm-hmm. interesting to compare notes and see what the other person thinks you know what their dreams are mm-hmm. um, what they re- what their hopes and dreams are it's fascinating actually well, Celia, this has been a fascinating conversation and um, please don't stop writing because I think your writing is wonderful. Um, this book is unbelievable and the link to the book and your other books and everything about you will be in the show notes. Um, I highly, highly recommend um, buying the book and having a read. It's uh, it's truly wonderful. So, Look, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom today. Um, I think it's been such an amazing conversation. So, so thank you. And look, thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Humans versus Retirement podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us today. Until next time, take care. Thank you for listening to the Humans versus Retirement podcast subscribe to be notified when new episodes become available we would love to have you along for the journey if you like what you heard then we would appreciate you taking a few minutes to leave us a review and lastly if you want to explore your retirement plans further download our free seven step retirement gps toolkit linked in the show notes the information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of tfp or dan haylett This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional advice, so please always seek the advice of professionals with any questions you may have regarding your retirement.